Now our very intrepid Alfred Peeling had the night off yesterday, but fear not, the, the indigene of New England is back to guide us through these uncertain, crazy climate times. She knows what the weather is going to be, Al. That's right. Yes, Mike, thank you. Uh, you should go uh, uh, <laughs> I had the night off. It was a Tom Tollefson's uh, 21st birthday, a friend of mine in Hudson, New Hampshire. We had a great time last night. Tom, 21 years old. And boy, that's how old I was when I came here 21 years ago. Where's the years go, right? Look at Alex moving with the eye. He's a big hurricane. Still a Category 3. Wins this morning 11, 120, but he's weakening now. And there's the 120, but that's a Category 3. Look at he's charging east, northeast, charge. We're going to have good weather here, but an upper level low means a lot of fair weather clouds in the next two days. Back to Nicole and Mike. The high pressure should move from the central U.S. to the mid-Atlantic. We should be back to 80 to 85 on Monday and Tuesday. So next week looks good for those of you starting vacations the way it looks right now. Again, there could be a few instability showers tomorrow afternoon, a greater chance on Saturday with that upper level low and chilly air aloft. It'll be cold at night. If you're going camping, take some extra blankets. Back to Mike, Mike, Nicole. See you tonight. The famous... Al Caprillion. Al, Al, <laughs> tell me, how does it feel to be uh, an icon, let's say? Well, Larry, I, uh, it makes me feel good that people uh, watch, and uh, they've been watching me over 20 years here at WNDS. I started the meteorology department here in August of 1983. We went on the air on Labor Day of 1983, so it feels good that you know people have watched me all those years. What exactly is a jet stream? Jet stream is a river of air. It's winds 20 to 40,000 feet that separate cool air, the north, hot air to the south. And, of course, this is the hurricane season. You might as well hold the microphone. Okay. Yeah. This well, is the hurricane yes. season. Uh, how do hurricanes uh, form? In, uh, they form uh, down over warm water, over 80 degrees. We had uh, just recently, uh, while you were here, actually the week you are here, we had uh, Hurricane Alex that was a Category 2 hurricane that moved uh, within 10 miles southeast of Cape Harris. He became a Category 3 as he moved uh, south and southwest uh, of uh, Cape Race, Newfoundland, the 120 mile per hour wind. So, Alex, uh, again, really, we didn't think he'd intensify as much as he did, but that's how weather is. It's an inexact science. But they form what we call the intertropical convergence zone. It's an area where the air converges and then rises and spreads out, diverges aloft. That's an area of clouds that runs west to east all year in the tropics, and that's the breeding grounds of. Hurricane development, they tend to form over warm waters. Ocean waters have to be at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. Right, right. Gulf of Mexico, too. Now, it seems as though when we were younger, <laughs> there were more hurricanes that got up this way than there are now. Is it any particular physical reason? Well, the ocean waters are cooler, even south side of Cape Cod. It's the warmest ocean waters in New England, south of Cape. But uh, because the ocean waters are cooler up here, they tend to weaken. Mm -hmm. All right, now, just uh, if you don't mind, talk a little bit of, more about your history, your background. You were talking about how you, what college <coughs> was it that you went to? Uh, Linden State College in Vermont. Yeah, I graduated in May of 83 and came here right after. And I would imagine you have some advice for those people who... Mathematics, yeah, if anyone's watching us in, in the towns that we're on in cable, uh, math, 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 because there are four areas, Larry, of meteorology is... TV, radio, broadcasting, there's the National Weather Service, private industry, and research. And if you were to go into research, you need four years of your bachelor's degree, and then you have to go two additional years for your master's degree. And that means uh, if it's math... More math, math, math for your math, yes. That means uh, you have a lot of calculations. That's, that's right, and uh, because if you go into research, a graduate, a master's degree is required, that involves more math, and that's why... Uh, we can't assume every student's not, you know, going to go into broadcasting or so private industry or National Weather Service. Some do decide to go into research. Do you think we have gotten better at forecasting? I think so. It's still an exact science, and sometimes the models overdo or underdo. You know, you're always going to have that because we have a lack of observations over the ocean. There's not, a, you know, we don't have... Uh, weather service, you know, in every town, every state of the country. That would take a lot of money for the government. And that probably, who knows if that will ever happen, at least not for a long time, I think. So, because there's a lack of data, the computer models still have their biases, and, you know, they, they could be off on the track of a storm. And, you know, even 50 miles north or south makes a big difference in the forecast. Alan, an inside look at some of the folks behind the scenes of the minor league New Hampshire Fisher Cats, and a profile of one former UNH hockey star, doing his part to enrich the lives of others in the Seacoast community. These stories and more when sports lights the lamp next. The official Mike de Blasi water bottle. <laughs>
It's about time. You can find this at your local gift shop, thrift <laughs> shop. Or you can much. order it online. Just send me the check and I'll send you a water bottle with a Bobblehead. picture of myself pasted to it. Stand by. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. And now, sports with Mike DeWasi. It's a day off for the Red Sox, who wrap up a 12-game road trip this weekend in Detroit. Derek Lowe gets the ball tomorrow. And the good news for Boston is that Lowe is undefeated in his career against the Tigers. What's the wackiest thing you've ever seen during sumo wrestling? Um, <laughs> well, five. People go down pretty high. Yeah. All in a day's work. On the farm, 10 panels, WNDS Sports. Staff and Kim Stadium play hard games. again tonight as the Fishers wrap up a four-game series with the also in action tonight, the Independent Athlete National Pride finishing up a home stadium set against the Long Island Ducks. A recap on Butch Hobbs and the boys comes your way at 10 o'clock. Starting 149 of a possible 154 games for San Francisco, Washington, and Oakland. Stubblefield part of the 49ers Super Bowl squad in 1994, one of his three Pro Bowl years. So six foot two inch, 290 pounder. It's expected to help break in rookie Vince Wilfork along the line. Though like does come with a bit of baggage. He faces a fine worth three game salary for testing positive for steroid THG. Last I don't know what inspired him. We're going to go to happen. schedule next. He's really doing his part to say thanks in Saturday's event, just uh, the first of the premier auction that's going on right now. And you should really take advantage of it and get on up to the point. Just keep my time. We'll be right back. Thank you. Going to six, five, four, three, two, Thanks for joining us tonight. Hope to see you again at 10. Good.